Watch, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is holding advo an advocacy day on Capitol Hill. The group is calling for Congress to increase funding for research on one of the deadliest types of cancers. According to the American Cancer Society, more than 55,000 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States this year, and more than 44,000 people will die from it. With us now is Julie Fleshman, the president and CEO of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, as well as Camille Moses, a six-year survivor of pancreatic cancer. Camille, congratulations. We're so happy mm -hmm. for you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of Thank course. You. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, so let's start with this. Um, the question I think a lot of people will have is what action would you like to see Congress take? So the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is up on the hill today with over 600 advocates from around the country, and we want to ensure that pancreatic cancer research remains a national priority. The disease, the five-year survival rate is only 9%. It's the third leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and the only way to change those outcomes is to ensure that there is more research dollars being focused on pancreatic cancer. And, you know, I can imagine, uh, Camille, that before being diagnosed with cancer, I don't know how aware you were of pancreatic cancer, whether it was an issue that, you know, you ever talked about. But do you hope that because this issue hits close to home for some senators, some of them have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Do you hope that their own personal experiences will play a factor in their decision making? I believe that's the key. I think that once you're diagnosed or once it comes into your family, unfortunately, my mother died of pancreatic cancer when I was only 24 years old. And then I was diagnosed at 53, so I knew I was in really bad trouble. And that's why I'm here. That's This is my first advocacy day. It's amazing. I'm so excited. And I really want to see them take steps. And it, it, no one else should be told, go home and die like I was. I, the first doctor who saw me told me, go home and die. So. Mm. Mm. That, you know, it's it's so, when you, when I learned about your story, Camille, that you were diagnosed back in 2012, you underwent uh -huh. 34 rounds of chemotherapy. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so, I guess the first question is, what's changed since 2012 for people that are facing pancreatic cancer today? You said that the doctor back then told you just go home to die. Is that still the case for some people? Pretty much, I hear that all the time. Um, people contact me all the time and tell me they've been told go get your affairs in order and I scream no, don't listen to that doctor. Get out there and get a second opinion. It's so important to get that second opinion. It's so important to contact. And one of the first things I tell them is contact the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network because they're equipped. They're equipped to tell that patient where to go and where to get the best, most cutting edge treatment that can save your life. Meanwhile, there is some new research. We're learning now that according to a new study, uh, new onset diabetes in African American and Hispanic men and women over the age of 50 may be an early indication of pancreatic cancer. Can we talk a little bit about the research out there, what we're learning about this disease and who it targets? Absolutely. So that's an important research study. It's actually something that PANCAN is working on as well. New onset diabetes is a symptom of pancreatic cancer. Um, it doesn't mean that every person who gets new onset diabetes will get pancreatic cancer, but some will. Um, and so we need to better understand that. And PANCAN is actually working on a large cohort study to better understand that in order to develop an early detection strategy for this disease. One of the problems is that we don't have an early Early detection test and so usually patients are diagnosed late and it's very difficult to treat at that point and so we need to educate people about the symptoms and risk factors and you can go to pancan.org to learn more about that and to the, all of the latest research that's out there. Now Camille mentioned that her mother had been diagnosed as well is that a risk factor having someone else in your family? It is. Uh, familial pancreatic cancer is a risk factor. Um, if you have two or more direct relatives who have had pancreatic cancer, there are studies that you can enroll in so that you can be followed. Um, and again, you can find out that information about those kinds of studies at pancan.org or by calling our call center and talking to one of our trained associates. So that's really good information, Julie. It must break your heart when you see patients or you hear stories of people who just simply were not aware, weren't aware that there were places that they could sign up or, you know, there were, there was, um, there were resources out there um, that they could take advantage of. 
Absolutely, and we all need to listen to our body. Um, and you know, when when something doesn't feel right, you need to question it. You need to talk to your doctor. And we certainly want to ensure that people understand what the symptoms and risk factors are for pancreatic cancer. Because the earlier you can get the diagnosis, the better we're going to be able to offer treatment options for those patients. Yeah, really so good advice. important. Yeah, we just see they were po posting 55,000 people will be diagnosed with cancer this year. Mm -hmm. uh, just incredible numbers. Uh, Julie Fleshman and Camille Moses, thank you both so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you so you. much for having us.